Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and it looks like I'm using a desktop computer right now. Uh, we've got the Google Chrome web browser up and running, and I've got uh, the Lilliputing website open here. On the other side, we've got YouTube and Netflix, and I can uh, play video, listen to music, do just about anything else. We can check out YouTube here, play a YouTube video. And we can run Windows applications. But I'm not technically using a Windows computer right now. What I'm actually doing is remote desktop software that's letting me get into a Windows computer to do all of these things. So I've got a PC running, but I'm actually remote controlling it from another device, which is a Google Chromebook. So if you look down here in the corner now, you'll see that we've got the Chrome OS application menu, and all of this is actually running in a browser tab. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it now. And you can see what we're actually running here looks very similar, but it's the Chrome OS operating system instead. So we can launch some of the same apps, but this time when we try to go to Netflix, for instance, we're going to get a message that tells us that Our operating system is not supported. So anyways, uh, let's take a quick look at how this is happening. I've actually got a Samsung Chromebook running here. This is the new version, costs about $249, has an ARM-based processor in it, and I've got it plugged in with an HDMI cable to my 1080p monitor. There's a USB cable which is actually going to a wireless connector so that I can use a keyboard and mouse and I've got a headphone jack here plugged into a set of speakers. Let's go ahead and unplug it and bring it over here where I can give you a closer look at the new CR. The new uh, Samsung Chromebook. So what we've got here is a thin and light laptop that weighs about 2.4 pounds, has a Samsung Exynos 5 dual core processor. It's an ARM Cortex A15 processor. It's two gigabytes of RAM and just 16 gigabytes of storage. And the idea is that you don't need a lot of storage because you can use an SD card if you want to put movies, music, other data on here. But for the most part, your uh, data is saved in the cloud. And what that lets you do is access it on multiple devices. So as you can see, I'm already a Google Chrome user. I'm using it on my Windows computer. All my settings, my apps, uh, they're synchronized across devices, uh, even open tabs. So I can pick up exactly where I left off on my Windows computer by picking this guy up. Uh, here we've got two USB ports. One is USB 3.0, one is USB 2.0. HDMI, power jack, SD card slot, headset jack. This port here, I'm not 100% certain, but I think it's a SIM card slot. It's got a little rubber uh, bumper in there right now. There is a 3G model, but this is the Wi-Fi only version. And that's about it for ports. On the bottom you'll notice that there's no um, battery panel or anything like that. So the idea is that you just sort of use it as is. You don't upgrade the RAM, you don't upgrade the storage. Uh, you might be able to. It's a sort of hackable device, but um, for the most part it's just a very thin, very light device that um, it's kind of remarkable how almost tablet-like it feels in terms of size. 2.4 pounds is really pretty light for a notebook with an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 pixel display. Another thing that's very tablet-like is you open the device and it's on almost instantly. In fact, even doing a cold boot, so that was just resumed from sleep, but let's go ahead and shut it down. Make sure the screen is off kind of hard to tell sometimes. I think the screen is still actually on. Yeah, now it's off. So we're going to go ahead and do a cold boot. And that's it. Operating system is up and running. And we are logged in and able to get online. Uh, the Chrome OS operating system is basically a web browser, not much else. All of these different apps you see here are apps that run in a web browser. So we've got Chrome, which just sort of launches the default browser, Gmail, Google Reader, Weather Channel, Google Drive, TweetDeck, and so forth. 
Um, there's a couple of things here that you don't get on just a regular Google Chrome browser, such as a file browser and a camera application. But for the most part, what you're doing here is you're running a web browser. Uh, fairly recently, I mean, early on, you just had a full screen web browser. Google did set it up now so that you can do side by side tabs and arrange things differently, and also gave us this sort of desktop here so that we can uh, view our applications from an app menu. Uh, there are certain things that are a little bit difficult to do on a browser-based operating system. For instance, uh, editing videos is something that I wouldn't really want to do. Where if, if you had to, say, upload an enormous video just so you could transcode it and shrink it so you could upload it to YouTube, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But things like editing photos are pretty easy to do with uh, online photo editing software. So, for instance, if I need to resize or crop a photo, I can actually uh, crop them using the built-in photo editor, but if I want to do some more advanced things, I found that uh, there's a pretty nifty app here called iPicky. There's a number of other ones that are available as well, but I can resize, I can crop, I can rotate and flip, I can adjust the exposure, and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can just do using web apps that you might be used to doing with um, native desktop apps. The advantage of using the web apps again here is that you can pick up exactly where you loft, left off on any device. If you lose your $249 Chromebook, you just pick up another one and log in with your account. All of your apps are saved and accessible for you. Or you can just go to your desktop computer running Windows, Mac, Linux and access the same applications. Um, the only thing you'll lose is any data that's stored on the local solid state disk or if you have anything on the SD card. Um, this is the first ARM-based version of a Chromebook and Honestly, I have a hard time telling the difference in terms of performance between it and the latest Intel version. So the first Chromebook felt kind of sluggish when you had lots of apps open, lots of tabs in the web browser. This, um, the, that version had an Intel Atom processor. Uh, earlier this year, Intel came out with a version that had a uh, faster Intel Celeron processor, and um, that one really sort of stepped up the game in a lot of ways. This version has an ARM Cortex A15 processor, and it's a little bit slower in terms of actual benchmark performance, but I found that I can open up lots and lots of browser tabs here, and I don't really run into a huge slowdown problems for the most part. You can see some things load a little bit more quickly than others, but uh, TweetDeck is kind of a slow loading application anyway. So, you know, it loads pages pretty quickly. It supports Adobe Flash. It supports uh, video um, web apps that have Flash uploaders, for instance, work pretty, pretty well in it. Um, again, not quite as fast as the Intel version, but for the most part, you're not going to notice. What I did notice is when I was doing things like the remote desktop application. So I was able to log into my computer, as we saw at the beginning of this, and um, use this as sort of a remote control for it. And based on the internet connection and, and so sort of the remote desktop, you could stream video from your PC over the internet to your Chromebook, but it's a little bit choppy. Same thing goes for audio. I was able to listen to music, but it didn't sound as good as listening to music directly on this device. Um, it does have decent but not spectacular speakers, about what you'd expect from a cheap 11.6-inch uh, laptop. There's not a lot of room for really thick speakers. The um, keyboard is sort of interesting. It's very comfortable to type on, but instead of having sort of your typical function keys, we've got special function keys here for Chrome, which include uh, app minimize and, and maximize, uh, switch windows, uh, brightness, volume, forward and back buttons, and so forth. There's a search button where you would normally find caps lock. If you really want caps lock, you can go back into the settings and change that. And uh, so it takes a little bit of getting used to a couple of things. For instance, the Alt and Control and Shift keys help change the uh, features here for up and down and uh, left and right arrow keys. So if you wanted to do home and end or page up and page down, you need to remember which key combinations to use. But once you get used to those, it's actually a fairly pleasant device to use. Um, again, if you need to be able to run Photoshop, uh, Adobe Premiere, Microsoft Office, this is not necessarily going to do it for you. But for $249, um, if you can get by with a Chrome, with a web browser being your primary app, it works pretty well. And there are ways actually to go ahead and install Ubuntu and other Linux-based software if you really want a more full-fledged experience. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a quick look at what, some of the things that you can and cannot do with a Samsung Chromebook.